Hello and welcome to Newsfeed on Trust TV. I am Sumaya Abubakar, taking you through the stories trending online that people are talking about and sharing around the globe today. INEC asks police to probe Adamawa wreck. Senator Chimaroke Namani has asked Peter Obi to withdraw his petition against the president-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Federal government sent to evacuate stranded Nigerians in Sudan by road. And 21 bodies exhumed after a Kenyan pastor told members to starve to meet Jesus. Now, top of what's trending today, we have the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, who has written to the Nigerian police force seeking an investigation into action of suspended Adamawa resident electoral commissioner Hudu Yunus Saari in the state's governorship election. Recall that Yunus Saari had declared the All Progressive Congress APC candidate Aisha Binani Dahiru as the winner of the supplementary poll, even while the collation of the results was ongoing, a decision INEC nullified. The police has now confirmed that they have received INEC's letter demanding Yunus Saari's probe. The police force spokesman Olumuiwa Adejobi said in a statement, the Nigerian police force is in receipt of a letter dated 18 April 2023 from the Independent National Electoral Commission detailing the alleged impropriety of the actions of one barrister Hudu Yunus Saari, the Adama State Resident Electoral Commissioner, during the recently concluded supplementary elections and called on the police to investigate and possibly prosecute the wreck for his actions. The Inspector General of Police, IGP Usman al Ali Baba, CFR has directed an investigative team to work in collaboration with the INEC to expedite action on the contents of the letter. The Inspector General of Police, while expressing the commitment of the NPF to upholding democratic values, assures Nigerians and the international community that the police will leave no stone unturned in unraveling the remote causes of unwholesome conduct of the wreck, as well as ensure that all persons fingered in the course of investigation are brought to book. An artisan commented, INEC is giving order to police to probe someone that has fled the country with a private jet. Who provided the jet in the first place? You people can't deceive me. Another said, all oh, this one is just your planned work for us to think INEC is legit. And someone said, this is what you get if you put the wrong people in the wrong offices. Incompetent fellow Brits, incompetence. Next on what's trending, we've got former governor of Enugu State, Senator Chimaroke Inamani, who has asked the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, to withdraw his petition against the president-elect, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, stating that it is dead on arrival. Inamani made the remarks in a statement issued on reporters on Sunday, April 23rd, 2023. The statement read, his petition is dead on arrival. He does not have the spread or national appeal. His appeal to non-electoral uh, matters is to demarket the president-elect and besmirch his reputation. He does not have near spread and national appeal. His petition is ego-driven, a joke carried too far. His attempt to highlight on non-electoral issues is trying to embarrass president-elect. Obi needs to come down from his high horse to allow sedate minds to negotiate on behalf of the Igbo and Southeast for safe landing to include our stake in the national palaver and share of the accruals of the Commonwealth. We must join the mainstream and participate in the making of a new Nigeria. We are not going anywhere. We did come pay and ready to begin for our own share. It is a common knowledge that others are doing the same. He added that Igbo has to confront reality now or be consigned to the backwoods of history. Time to align is now. Inet then said, next comment from His Excellency Peter Obi would be, My dear respected elder brother, I don't have any problems with you. Please don't disappoint me further. God bless you. A lady asked, the high horse you guys have been coming down from since I was born. What have you achieved? And a guy said, many Igbo politicians are backstabbers. It is why the leadership uh, position ha actually doesn't reach us. So many of them are after their pockets more than anything. Next on what's got people talking on social media is Nigerians who are stranded in Sudan will be evacuated by road, according to the Foreign Affairs Ministry, Geoffrey Onyema. Uh, many are stranded in the North African country following a power tussle that has resulted in a crisis. The development has led to calls you know, for the evacuation of the nation's citizens. He explained that our situation is particularly challenging because the numbers are so great. Some of these countries, like the U.S. and European countries, have started evacuating. But what they have been evacuating were actually their diplomatic staff. They haven't been able to start evacuating their citizens there. 
we can't evacuate all our diplomatic staff at the moment because they need to also coordinate the evacuation of all students that we're talking about. His comment comes as a statement from the Embassy of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in Khartoum, signed by the Charge D Affairs, H.Y. Garko, advised students who make up of about 80% of the stranded persons to stay indoors. The federal government said it was still dangerous to embark on a journey towards the borders of Sudan without security clearance and guarantee from the Sudanese authorities. The embassy also reassured the Nigerian student that their safety and well-being were of the top priority concern. An artisan said, by road, because the airspace is not safe. People need to be educated before criticizing. There is no way they can get people evacuated via air. Another commented, for those of you mocking him, even USA and other European countries haven't evacuated their people. Three days ago, all the planes at Sudan airport was burnt. So right now, it is very risky to fly to Sudan. And someone added, honest question, what is making our people to go schooling in Sudan? Next on what's trending, we have Zamfara State Governor Bello Mohamed Matawale, who has approved the reinstatement of the Emir of Yandoto, Ali Ugariba Marafa, who was suspended for conferring a traditional title to a notorious bandit kingpin, Ado Aleu. Recall that the monarch bestowed the traditional title of Sarkin Fulani to the bandit on Saturday, July 16, 2022. The Emir asserted that he decided to give the title to Aleru because of the pivotal role he played during a peace process arranged between the Emirates and bandits who terrorized a fair local government area of the state. However, the move did not go down well with the people, both within and outside the state, forcing the government to constitute a committee to investigate the action of the Emir. In a statement issued by the Secretary of the State Government, Kabir Balarebi, on Sunday, April 23, 2023, said the traditional ruler was reinstated following the recommendations of the committee who investigated his rule and cleared him. The statement added the committee found no evidence of any ill motive or collaboration between the Emir and the bandits. Based on the findings of the committee, the traditional title was conferred on the repentant bandits as part of peace building efforts between the repentant bandits and the banditry affected communities in Safi and Gusau local government areas, which included Yandoto town. The reinstatement takes immediate effect, it says. A netizen commented, and Namdi Kanu is being detained unlawful for fighting for liberation of his people in the same country a dreaded terrorist are bagging chieftaincy titles. A guy said, meanwhile, in a town in Edo, most of the Okada riders are from Zamfara State, whom are farmers who can't go to farm anymore for fear of being killed by bandits. They have all resorted to commercial bike riding to make a living for themselves. And a lady wrote, Nigeria lacks responsible and accountable leaders. This man should never have been reinstated. How will he learn? Now let's take a short break. And when we come back, you will see what Davido almost did to a fan. Stay tuned. Welcome back. It's Newsfeed. A viral video has been trending of the moment Davido nearly punched a fan who jumped on stage and started pointing at him at his timeless concert in Lagos. Take a look at the moment. A lady said, can't you people be in a concert without jumping on stage? You're lucky that it was not Burner Boy. Him for roast you like corn. Another lady said, I don't blame Davido. See how he was coming at Davido. I wish it was Burner Boy. And a guy added, them suppose wipe him cod. <laughs> Next on what's trending, we have influencer Caramel who addresses Nigerians who call people gold diggers. Take a look at what she had to say. What is this obsession with calling somebody a gold digger because they like money? Please, should I like sand? Uh -uh. God has given me the grace and authority to choose. I've chosen the good things for my life. You are coming to shout. Hey, hey, hey. My dear, if you are obsessed with poverty, just say so. You will find your niche. And you people will be okay. Ha. As for me and my household, poverty is not a portion. In Jesus' name, amen. Ha. A lady agreed. She said, soft life only, a life of ease, peace, comfort, and intentional happiness. It does not require struggle, love, stress, and distress. 
Another said, liking money isn't the problem. Money is sweet. Doing whatever it takes, which would involve love scamming and hurting others is the problem. Don't claim you love a person when all you love is the money. And someone wrote, she said what she said. And that is on a period. If you like poverty, stay there. Next to what's trending, we have police operatives in Kenya who have exhumed 21 bodies from shallow graves in Malindi, a coastal town in the southeastern part of the country. This comes after Pastor Paul McKenzie in Thenge of the Good News International Church told his members to starve themselves to death in order to meet Jesus. BBC reports that 15 members of the church were rescued from shallow graves in the Shakalhola forest, including a 55-year-old man found on Friday in a hideout. Kenya broadcasting station KBC said that 58 graves have so far been identified, adding that dead children are among those that have been exhumed. Ntenge, also known as the cult leader, was arrested on April 15, 2023, after four bodies suspected of having starved themselves to death were discovered by the police. A police source who spoke with AFP news agency disclosed that in one grave, investigators found the bodies of three children with their father on one side and their mother on the other side. Another grave contained the bodies of a woman and a girl, both facing each other, all appeared to have died in recent weeks. Police have identified at least 58 suspected graves on the grounds of the Good News International Church, rising fears that the death toll will rise significantly. One Kenyan media outlet reported that more than 100 people may have been buried in the graves. The police said that we have not even scratched the surface, which gives a clear indication that we are likely to get more bodies by the end of the exercise. An artisan commented, all I want to know is, was the pastor starving himself to? If not, how can people be so gullible to such extent? R.I.P. to the dead. A guy wrote, it worked. They have met Jesus now. Why is he being arrested again? And someone added, I dislike when people like this are tagged pastors do. This is a sick fellow with sick members. They don't identify with the body of Christ. They are possessed. And lastly, onto a funny video of a tricycle driver who chose, you know, his life over money. Take a look. Now that is a case of it's not about the money, but what is the passenger still doing there though? And that is all on Newsfeed today on Trust TV. Follow us and subscribe to all our social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram and Twitter. Bye.